everybody. It's Molly with All Ears and I'm here today with a brand new video. We've done this at all the other Disney parks and now it's time for Magic Kingdom. We are going to show you how to have the perfect day at Magic Kingdom. I'm going to be sharing some strategies to avoid weights, the best foods you can eat, some tips and tricks, some underrated secrets and places to go. I hope you're ready. I hope you're excited. This is going to be a long and fun and magical day. Let's get to it. plaza and headed to park it took 10 minutes it's now 7 25 to get through the toll plaza because it's processed but what you can do to help yourself get there through faster have your uh, magic band ready if you're staying on property or an annual pass have your ID ready um, in case they ask for it have a mask on when you're speaking to the cast members and um, or have your maybe uh, method of payment ready if you're going to be purchasing parking. So if you can have all that stuff ready, it'll help you get through a little faster. But let's get parked. We've made it through security and we are headed to get to the Magic Kingdom. There are three ways to get there on a day like today. It's busy. It's spring break. You got your ferry boat and your monorail. Those are your traditional ways to get to Magic Kingdom. Or when it's busy, they run buses. And if you remember when I tried to do this video before, there weren't any buses when I walked up, even though I was like, hey guys, buses are the fastest way. It won't take you very long. And then I waited for a while for a bus and it still was probably faster. But this is what I normally am used to seeing is just buses on buses on buses and they'll sort you and get you on there. And I know a bus is not as magical as the monorail, but it is faster on a day like today. So just have your patient pants on when you're getting on the buses. They're all divided. Uh, they're all divided into zones. Just one, um, and the cash members will direct you to a zone. Thank you very much. Um, and they're all either dividers or distance away from each other. Um, so you might get one zone, you might get two zones. But just be patient, and they'll get you on the bus. All right. So this is where the buses drop you off. Um, it's close to where the buses drop you off if you're coming from resort bus um, but you don't have to go through security again all the resort bus guests are gonna walk through security um, but we are headed straight to the turnstiles to get into Magic Kingdom it's about 7 45 a few minutes before that um, park officially opens at 8 but you see how long it takes to get into the Magic Kingdom to get through security to park um, so you want to make sure you get to the Magic Kingdom, I would say an hour before the park opens if you're parking at the Transportation and Ticket Center um, so that you can get into the park and get the day going. Rolling up to the park, really not very busy. So you get to the turnstiles, but keep those eyes open. If you see a family in front of you or people in your way, run them down. I don't mean that. Ooh, let's do the facial recognition test. This sounds fun. It's something that they're trying out um, so that you wouldn't eventually have to have a magic band. I've never done it. Hello. Hi. Can I try this? Would you like to? Yes. Absolutely. So you're going to come on up. You're going to okay. tap your band. Okay. And then you'll look straight ahead of the camera. Crazy. They just used my face as my magic band, basically. Just putting my finger down. I want to clear something up. That's not a fingerprint. A lot of people think it is. Disney's not taking your fingerprints. It's actually a biometric measurement. It's basically a picture of your finger that uniquely identifies your finger to your ticket. But they're testing out the facial thing, basically, I think, to replace the fingers. Because um, I'm even faster. Okay, now I want to cry because is this the best way? Good morning, Mickey! Hi! Hi, Minnie! Is there a better way to start the day? Oh my gosh, hi Pluto, hi Daisy. Hi Donald. The point of getting here so early, especially during busy times of year, is to get on a ride fast <laughs> um, and to beat the lines to a couple things. First thing in the morning, let's just do it. Let's just do it. Let's get our hair wet. You know where we're going. Oh, early morning on Main Street. 
Isn't it hitting you right in the feels? So beautiful. If you weren't running to a ride, which I do recommend you're, you should do, it's a great time to take pictures on a very empty main street. Not a lot of people, beautiful lighting. We don't have time for that. You know where we're going, right? So most people, when they come in, they head to Seven Doors Mine Train. Fantasyland in general is probably the most popular way to rope drop. But unless you're gonna get here early, 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 Seven Doors Mine Train, it's already gonna have a long line first thing. And it's gonna drop. We're gonna ride Seven Doors Mine Train today, as long as our plans don't go awry. And we're not gonna wait too long for it because it's gonna drop in the afternoon. But which is not gonna drop is Splash Mountain. Splash Mountain tends to be the longest line in the park. It's very popular. It doesn't have a lot of capacity. It takes a while to load and unload the boats. So if you've seen any of my videos, you know that since there's no fast pass right now, those are the main factors on what makes the wait times. How fast people can load and unload and the capacity. So that's why rides like Splash Mountain and Pirates of the Caribbean and the Jungle Cruise, all of which are boats and can't load to full capacity, get really long lines early and then stay there basically all day. Look at that. That's already the Jungle Cruise line. I don't think they've opened yet, but you can see people are already ready to go. So we're gonna try and knock out some of those really popular rides over on this side of the park first thing so we don't end up waiting an hour for Pirates of the Caribbean or Splash Mountain. Looks like Splash Mountain already has a little bit of a queue. That is to be expected because um, they probably haven't opened up the actual part of the queue yet and they probably won't until right about eight o'clock. But I'm having a little deja vu because you may recall if you watched my Disney disaster video, I tried to film this video already and everything went wrong. The buses didn't come, a bunch of rides broke down, splashed in open while I was in line. So we can link that for you. It's a great video. Um, show you what to do when things don't go according to plan. But let's hope that Splash Mountain does open and we don't have history repeat itself. But they are testing the boats and that is always a good sign. All right, I'm in the splash queue. Remember, they haven't actually opened up the queue part, like where inside where the line normally goes. So I don't think it'll be too long. I think it'll definitely be shorter than if we were to come in a back in a little bit, because this one will get up to, I don't know, an hour and 90 minutes and be that pretty much all day till the very end of the day. Now we're ready. We are already moving. This is very good. Because remember before, we were not moving. So, I think we're gonna not wait too long. I'll time it for you so you have a good idea of how long to wait. Splash Mountain has a delayed opening again. So what I'd like you to learn from me today, on this day, round two of this, is that Splash Mountain usually has a delayed opening. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ride Pirates, which is what I was gonna do second anyway, because like I said, it gets a very long line and it stays there all day. We're gonna go ride Pirates. I don't think it's gonna have a long line right now. And then we're gonna check the My Disney Experience app and see if Splash Mountain's open. Hopefully, because it had a delayed open, we can it'll open back up and the timing will be perfect and we can just walk right on Splash Mountain after Pirates. If not, we'll come up with a new game. Five minute wait. Five minute wait at Pirates of the Caribbean. That's what I'm talking about. Done. Amazing. You know what? It is the perfect day when I get to ride Pirates first because that's my favorite ride in the Magic Kingdom. So I'll consider that a win. Um, Splash Mountain is still down, but Jungle Cruise has a posted five minute wait. 
Uh, it opened back up while I was on the ride, so we're gonna go get on Jungle Cruise now, because again, that one will get a long line later. And I wanna kinda stay in this area, because I'm hoping that I can get on Splash very quickly once it reopens. So I'm gonna kinda linger in the Frontierland Adventureland area for a bit, and just cross my fingers that it opens soon. That's why I haven't removed this yet. As you can see, it's jumped up to 30 minutes. I don't think I'm gonna end up waiting that long, which is great, um, but it's already gotten much, much longer. It's already back by the tree house. Um, but lucky for us, we're already in the main part of the queue. It's been just about 20 minutes exactly, and we are getting on our Jungle Cruise boat. Jungle Cruise already has a 45 minute wait, so we did a good job there. Looks like Pirate's wait is already out here as well. 45, so high five us for checking both of those off the list early. And I just looked at the app and Splash is back open, posted five minute wait. So we are hustling over there. This is why I didn't want to leave the area. Because if a ride's down that you'd like to ride, try not to go too far because then you can keep checking back on the app um, and sneak back in and hopefully not wait in too long of a line. Ready? There's not too long of a line now. Do I see? I see people on it. Yay, yay, yay. Let's do it to it. Look at this. Look at this. All right, it says posted 35 minute wait. We're doing it. I don't know if it'll be that long. Been a little less than 20 minutes and I am about to head inside the barn. So I feel like 35 will be pretty accurate, which again, this is only gonna get longer throughout the day. So I'll take it. There are no seat requests at this time on attractions. They're just too busy and they're trying to get people on and off the rides quickly and keep the wait times down. So um, you also, there's nowhere to really stand out of the way right now safely. Um, so you can't request a seat. So let's just hope that we're in the back. It actually was only about 25 minutes, which is even better than 35. And we're ready to party. Now we're ready to party. Hang on to your hats though when you go down the drop because it's gonna fly off and you're never getting it back. Seriously. Ended up only waiting about 25 minutes for Splash Mountain and it already has an 85 minute wait. So we really snuck in at the perfect time. So I still do think you should come here first. Um, and if it opens on time, great. If it doesn't, stay close by. Uh, do what I did, go get on Pirates and Jungle Cruise. Both of those already have about a 50 minute wait um, and they're gonna, again, stay there all day. So we, it's very early 9.30 and we have knocked out three of the biggest rides in the park. The park's only been open officially for an hour and a half. So perfect day, well underway. I think we wanna get coffee. Couple places to get breakfast and coffee. 
Um, you've got Westward Ho right here, this little stand. Um, they do like a breakfast sandwich. Um, they've got cold brew coffee from Joffrey's right there, so you can definitely get breakfast there. Oh, hi. How are you? You look great, liver lips. It's nice to see you. Mwah. <laughs> so handsome. <laughs> Oh, always good to see a bear. Um, so that's a great option. Friar's Nook um, in the Fantasyland, um, they do the same breakfast, um, but they also have a tots and gravy situation. Um, you can also do breakfast over at Sleepy Hollow. Um, you can get those waffles, uh, including the one with the Nutella on it. If you want to go to Gaston's Tavern, you can get that big cinnamon roll. Of course, the bakery on Main Street, where you can get all your coffee goodies. And I think we're gonna go there. Even though I know there's gonna be a line for coffee, I just really wanna sit on Main Street with a coffee. A couple other places you could do breakfast. Um, the Lunching Pad over in Tomorrowland also does the same breakfast sandwich. Um, and, oh, some of these places also have like cinnamon sugar donut holes. Um, a lot of these places are on mobile order, so um, like lunching pads on mobile order, but Western Ho isn't, so I would do the one Tomorrowland just because mobile order is faster. There's also the Joffrey's cart over in Tomorrowland. We can get the Joffrey's uh, more expansive menu as well as they've always got those big donuts. Look how much busier Magic Kingdom is now about 45 minutes or so after the park opened, Main Street is much busier, which is why I say you gotta get here well before the park opens to start the getting in process. Because if you come in now, you're too late, you already missed rope drop, you're already walking into long lines, and you missed that sweet spot window of being able to get on some of the most popular rides without any kind of wait. But we're gonna wait now for coffee because so far the bakery line goes all the way back here but you know what i won't wait in line for rides but i will wait in line for coffee acquired the most important meal of the day and now we're gonna go enjoy it look at this view look at this view do you want to drink coffee with this view because i do this is the hub grass it's beautiful it's comfortable sometimes there's photographers here this is where you do the super zoom over there um, but over on this side or across the street Anyone's welcome to just sit and enjoy. So we're gonna sit on the hub grass. We're gonna drink our coffee. Maybe a cavalcade will come by. Maybe the Dapper Dance will come by. And it's gonna be a lovely way to reward ourselves for getting up early. Enjoy our coffee with the most beautiful view. Always ask for water, stay hydrated free water when you get Starbucks. Also, it only took me like 25 minutes to get all the way through that line, get my coffee and sit on the hub. So really not bad. Tell me what's better than sitting on the hub grass, the giant coffee, castle behind you, and the dapper dance riding by. Literally nothing. Had my coffee, I hear a cavalcade coming. It's Mickey and the gang, and we are gonna make one of my dreams come true with a photo. So this fabulous cast member is doing the super zoom photo. So you stand right here, find the cast member at the hub, 
then you'll look up towards the plaza and they'll get that super zoom photo. And I've always wanted one with the characters in the hub because then it's like Mickey and the gang are in your photo. Okay. Gabriel, photo pass made my dreams come true. Here's my super zoom photo. Um, and he took it three different times. There was nobody waiting. Um, so he kept taking it so that I could get the characters in the background with me. So thank you, Gabriel, you are amazing. Um, and I love that super zoom photo. It's included with uh, Memory Maker or your annual pass if you have one of the ones that gets photo pass. Um, and you get not only the 15 second movie, but you get the clip, the photo, which is a really cool, you know, zoomed out photo of the Magic Kingdom. Um, they also have those super zoom photos over at Animal Kingdom near Everest. And there's two in Galaxy's Edge in Hollywood Studios. So make sure you get those if you've got your the Memory Maker. One of my favorite things about Disney parks is ducks. Bye friend. Um, and I just love Disney ducks and I have a weird thing where I photograph them and I send them to the team because we are a duck vlog. Um, but that duck just came and ate all of the popcorn that was on the ground near this popcorn cart and flew away. And I wonder one, I like always wonder if there's like a duck hierarchy, like if the Magic Kingdom ducks outrank the Epcot ducks. Like this is the primo duck spot to be near this popcorn cart. So these must be the coolest ducks, right? You can see him, look, he just, he's in there now. Anyway, I love the ducks. It's weird, but who I am. We got a lot of long lines. We have a 95 minute wait at Splash right now. We're looking at about an hour for Space Pirates. Uh, it's a small world. Lots of things are really long right now. Um, but not to worry for us because those are all going to drop. Also, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train is temporarily closed. It's been down for a, like a, over an hour at this point uh, for technical difficulties. So let's hope that comes back up. Um, but I am confident that things are going to drop in the afternoon. We're just in the peak of, of weights right now. So we're gonna go do something that doesn't usually have too long of a wait. This is when you wanna keep an eye on your filler attractions. Those are the attractions that fluctuate throughout the day, but you can usually get on them with a 30 minute wait or less. Mini Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, Dumbo the Flying Elephant, Under the Sea Journey of the Little Mermaid. Those are all great filler attractions. Um, but right now we are headed to carousel of progress so it's posted a five minute wait but i bet it'll be a little longer because you have to wait for the show like it to rotate a little bit but it seems to be compared to the other theater shows pretty quickly loading so let's go share that great big beautiful tomorrow friends it's moving pretty quickly because while it is a 20 minute show it rotates and um, you only have to wait a few minutes for the theater to open up for you because it's different sections so it's not like you have to wait the whole 20 minutes for the whole theater to dump out um, like you would at Mickey's Fill Our, Ma uh, Mickey's Fill Our Magic or the Country Bear Jamboree or the Tiki Room or whatever that's just like load the whole theater the whole show runs and then it gets dumped so those rides and those uh, shows do get really really long lines but this one doesn't tend to get as long of a line because it's consistently able to load and unload people um, after a shorter amount of time because it's just like a few minutes so they've loaded in a ton of people into the uh loading area i guess you want to call it everybody's on dots with their party so the line is moving in big chunks i love the carousel of progress um, this is something not this version but the original debuted at the 1964-65 new york's world's fair um, and it was a state of the art at the time because of the human audio animatronics um, along with great moments with mr lincoln which is another attraction that they have out in disneyland now so this is where that iconic song great big beautiful tomorrow comes from written by the sherman brothers who wrote it's a small world and tiki room and music for the jungle book and mary poppins and their disney legends this is one of walt disney's favorite attractions it's one he actually worked on so i love it um, and it's 20 minutes in the air conditioning. A couple of really cool things to look for in this. Um, when you first go into the scene, the Father John uh, mentions the robins that are outside of the windows. Those are little animatronic robins, and one of those is actually the one used in Spoonful of Sugar from Mary Poppins. That's rumor has it, but I have that on good authority. Um, and then, of 
course, the song Great Big Beautiful Tomorrow is actually about Walt Disney. The Sherman Brothers wrote it with him in mind, so if you replace the word man with Walt, the song would go, Walt has a dream and that's the start. He followed his dream with mind and heart, and when it becomes a reality, it's a dream come true for you and me. So that's a really cool thing to think about, that this is all about Walt. Um, and I just love this show, and I think it's an underrated gem. Casper is saying right now is that it's a 20 minute show, you have to sit for the whole thing because the theater rotates. So if you don't think your kids are going to sit for 20 minutes, not for you. Also, you have to keep your mask on, you just reminded us. Also, I like to take my ears off at the shows because it's nice to the people behind you. Yeah, it looks like the Robins are getting ready to celebrate Valentine's Day today. What year is it? Oh, right around the turn of the century. Phew, boy. Hottest 4th of July we've had in years. We've come a long way though since the turn of the century over 20 some odd years ago. Yeah. Well, it's another Halloween here in the fabulous 40s. Let's go with that dream boat, Wilfred. Wilfred, what a flush! Now it's a little tricky. Just use your game glove to fly behind the other guy and pull the out. Okay, let's go. 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 Let's go.
it's kind of an underrated fantasy land ride at this point because you've got heavy hitters like Peter Pan's Flight, It's a Small World, um, Seven Doors Mine Train, and people kind of forget about that silly old bear. But I love it. I love bouncing with Tigger. I think it's so cute and definitely a must if you've got Littles or you're a Pooh fan. Um, but now we're hungry. We need ourselves a little snacky snack. I am at Friar's Nook where you can get tots and brats is kind of their slogan, which I think is cute. Um, you can get bacon, mac and cheese tater tots, loaded buffalo chicken tater tots, a brat, um, a loaded buffalo chicken hot dog, or a loaded macaroni and cheese hot dog. And we're gonna get ourselves some tots. Here are my delicious tots. Call me Napoleon Dynamite, because I am thrilled about these. You've got some crispy tater tots, some buffalo chicken, celery, blue cheese. Yum, yum, yum. I cannot wait. They didn't have a fork, so I'm eating them with a spoon, like a lady. Mm. I love tater tots, but I really love buffalo chicken. And definitely taste that buffalo sauce. It's got a little heat, which I'm impressed by, because Disney food doesn't always. If you're heat averse, maybe go for the loaded bacon mac and cheese tots. I can feel this buffalo. So many things just happened. I also, I got a huge chunk of blue cheese, which I'm here for, but then I also was almost attacked by a bird because there are birds around here that want my tots. The chicken, I wish there was a little bit more of it, like of the mixture in general, to cover more tots. But I like that it has a little bit of heat. I love the big chunks of blue cheese. I like the crunch from the celery. Tots are cooked well. No complaints here. A great savory snack or shareable or lunch. Another great one, I had it in a video recently, the spring roll cart in Adventureland. They do those cheeseburger spring rolls. That's another great savory snack. All right, we had our delicious snack. We are continuously fueled for fun. And I noticed on the My Disney Experience app that Haunted Mansion only had a 20 minute wait. And that seems like a perfect after lunch attraction. On our way to Mansion, I did want to point out that they're doing some beautiful additions and upgrades to the tangled bathrooms. Like they added all this, it didn't go down this far before. And now it goes down and like leaks onto the ground. Rapunzel's clearly been over here with her paintbrush sprucing up her area probably for the 50th anniversary, and I think that's really respectful of her. All right, here's the end of the line. Again, a posted 20 minute wait, which is great for Mansion. It's right here. Sometimes I see it go all the way down, almost to Big Thunder Mountain Railroad um, and Frontierland. So far, um, we've had really great luck with wait times today. Haven't really waited too long for anything. Even Winnie the Pooh, which was posted 25, ended only being 20. So let's see what happens on Mansion. Haunted Mansion without a doubt the most popular attraction in Disney lore. It's a cult favorite, classic, a must ride. And what I love about Haunted Mansion is that it's located all over the world. There's a Haunted Mansion, but it's different. It's in different lands all over the world. Um, like in France, it's actually in Frontierland. Um, in Disneyland, it is in New Orleans Square. Shockingly, in Tokyo, it's actually in Fantasyland, which doesn't feel like it would make sense, but it does. Um, I did a whole video about all the details and backstory and history of the Haunted Mansion, which you should check out if you're a fan because there's so much lore and there's so much Imagineering fun in here. And what's amazing about the Haunted Mansion is it's been around um, since 1969 for over 50 years and the effects still are intact. Like the, the uh, They're using the same effects they used when the attraction came out and they're still amazing and they're still mind blowing. So I love it. I love it from an Imagineering perspective. Um, and I love that it's an Omnimover attraction, which means the vehicles keep moving. Um, so you can get on Haunted Mansion for not a very long wait, like we're doing right now, hopefully, um, even on a really busy day. So don't get in line for Mansion when it's an hour most days, because um, it will likely drop since they can consistently be getting people on and off those doom buggies.
dying to have you. <laughs> Haunted Mansion ended up only being a 10 minute wait and I was on and off the ride in 20 minutes, which is amazing for such an amazing attraction. Golly gee, do I love it. Yeah, it's so great. Also, I got stopped a little bit and it was during Madame Leota's scene, which is like probably the best scene to get stopped in. Just love that ride. There's so much detail. Did you know Madame Leota's voiced by Eleanor Audley, who also voiced Maleficent and Lady Tremaine, two iconic villains. Um, but her face was actually modeled after an Imagineer named Leota Toombs, um, which is a very good name if you're gonna be in the Haunted Mansion. But she had a very high squeaky voice, which is why they used um, Eleanor Audley for the seance. But you can hear Leota Toombs' voice at the end when she's going, hurry back. Be sure to bring your death certificate. That's actually Leota Toombs' voice. So that's pretty neat. Anyway, uh, check the wait times. Big Thunder's down to 30, so we're going to head over there. Space is down to 45. Peter Pan's still at 45. Um, Seven Doors Mine Train is about an hour. Splash is over an hour. So wait times are low, but not too low. And we want them lower before we go get in line for something like Peter Pan's Fighter Space Mountain. The reason wait times are a little bit lower right now is because it's about 1.45. Um, so I think that people that got here really early, like I did, have already gone back to take a little naparoo. Um, or they left because they're going to park hop. Park hopping starts at 2 right now. Um, you can watch my video on park hopping if you want more info on that and how it's working. But sometimes in the mid-afternoon you'll see a dip in wait times because people go back to rest or they leave the park. So but we're powering through. Time for Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. 30 minute wait, 40 inch height requirement, just like Splash Mountain. So much fun. And sometimes I say it's my favorite mountain, but then I ride space and I think space is my favorite mountain. But either way, I love this ride and I think it is oh so much fun. on and off Big Thunder Mountain Railroad in 15 minutes. So clearly it wasn't a 30 minute wait. It might be now, it's all the way out here now, but we caught it at a great time. I love that one so much. It is so fun when you slide about in your little seat. Love it. Um, and now we've had a savory snack. What do we say we have a little sweet snack? I think we could use some dessert. Is there a better or more iconic snap than a Dole Whip when you're at the Magic Kingdom? You got to get a Dole Whip. Now, you may know that pineapple, which is the classic, not my fave. I love the coconut, which is now listed as its own item in mobile order before you had to say vanilla and then get up there and be like, but I really mean coconut. There's also a coconut pineapple swirl you can do, um, but you gotta have a Dole Whip and I just mobile ordered myself a coconut cup here at Aloha Isle and I'm gonna get that and enjoy my snack. What I like to do after I acquire my Dole Whip is find somewhere along the way here to sit because, hi there, hi. Um, then I can watch the cavalcades while I eat my delicious treat. Um, if you're not familiar, the cavalcades are what they have instead of parades right now. Um, they're completely random. There's five different ones here at the Magic Kingdom. There's Mickey and Friends, there's Goofy and Friends. There is a Fantasyland Friends one, a Princess one, and a Tinkerbell one, and they completely random. They start here in, in uh, Frontierland, go through Liberty Square, and then down Main Street. But if you have a treat or something, you can sit along the route, and then you'll catch a few maybe as they go by. Due to a very dramatic 
phone saving error. My clip of me actually eating my Dole Whip is lost into the void for all time. But let me tell you that the coconut Dole Whip will change your life if you like coconut. It is so good. It's so smooth and creamy. It is not plant-based. Like regular pineapple Dole Whip is plant-based. So is the lemon, so is the lime, so is the raspberry, so is the orange. Um, so it does have dairy in it, which is why it's so smooth and creamy and coconutty and delicious. I'm so glad it's on mobile order now. So if you're not used to using mobile order, it's actually great. You do it in the My Disney Experience app you can customize things and then now list coconut cup. It didn't always do it before it said you had to click vanilla. And then when you got it to the counter, say, could I actually have coconut, please? Um, just like that in that voice. But now coconut cup, click it. It's an option, do it. You won't regret it. I think that's just a great way to relax and get to see some characters since there aren't character meet and greets either right now. Um, just have a seat along the parade route somewhere with a good treat. Um, also, when I was waiting for the cavalcades to come by, hoping one more would come by, I um, had some photos taken with a PhotoPass cast member and a cool magic shot right here. It's the Hitchhiking Ghost magic shot. Um, and I think if you're gonna pay for Memory Maker, get as many photos as you can. And uh, I love the magic shots. So if a photo pass photographer ever says like, do something weird, like look scared or look down or look a different direction or make a hand gesture, just do it. Cause it'll be fun, I promise. The park is open late today. It's open till nine. Usually it's only open till seven, um, but we've got a little extra time today. So we're gonna do some shopping, which I recommend doing at any, on any day, no matter the hours. But if you're gonna be popping to Memento Mori, which is the Haunted Mansion store to see if there's any cool Haunted Mansion goodies that I can show off. Hi Glenn, how are you? Good. So all my mansion fans, this is where you want to come. This is where you can get a million different shirts. Look at all these. Look at all of these. Um, sweatshirts. Oh, I like this one. That's a cool one. That kind of looks more like Disneyland's Haunted Mansion though than Walt Disney World's. Um, and also, that's Madame Leota as a youth. That's cool. Hmm, what other things? So a long sleeve shirt, that won't do me very good in Florida right now. Um, but if you're a mansion person, lots of stuff. Oh, look, little guys. I love this Leota keychain, that's really fun. Tons of pins, phone cases. Basically, anything you can imagine. This is a really fun take home. It's a four piece or a four puzzle set. Another thing that I love that I think are really unique are these dioramas that you can make and have like the little attic scene, $24.99 or um, Madame Leota Seance and also dog stuff. <laughs> LOL, those would never fit Kronk. He's a, he's a girthy boy. Um, and toys and collars. These are awesome wine bottle stoppers with the hitchhiking ghosts on them. Those are amazing if you are the kind of person that opens a bottle of wine and then stops it again. I was gonna go ride Dumbo because it's only a 15 minute wait and then I just checked the app again and Peter Pan is down to a 25 minute wait, which is for sure the lowest I've seen all day. Peter Pan's flight has had a 45 to 60 minute wait most of the day today. So let's go take advantage of that 25 minute wait. And honestly, I'm surprised at how long it's been all day considering how fast and efficient the Peter Pan ride system is. But I guess that just goes to show you how popular that attraction is even after 50 years. Opening day attraction where you get to fly in a pirate ship above Neverland. It is still one of the most popular attractions in Walt Disney World. And uh, looks like it's getting a little facelift. It's a small world recently got a facelift. 
And uh, that's why they have this, what they call scrim hanging right here. Um, and they print a picture of what the building's supposed to look like under it, or over it, over it. The print the picture over it and the building is under it. You know what I'm saying. So that way, if you still take a picture of Fantasyland, it doesn't completely ruin your photo. To help avoid traffic jams and tight squeezes, they're actually using Columbia Harbor House for the Peter Pan's flight queue. Because um, this restaurant still hasn't reopened, which is a real bummer because it's delish. Definitely a fan fave in Magic Kingdom, but luckily, you can get some of the items from the Columbia Harbor House at the Tomorrowland Terrace um, over in between Main Street and Tomorrowland. Yeah, they have limited hours, so make sure you check that out if you want to eat there. But you can get your, hello there, hello. fish and chips, lobster roll, etc., over there, since you can't get it right here. Oh, Nana. Poor Nana? Poor father! I physically am unable of walking through this queue without doing that. I'm so sorry. But I'm not really. Thank you. flight took exactly 25 minutes so glad to do that one I love Peter Pan's flight I know it's short and some people think it's overrated but I think it's quintessential and part of a best day at the Magic Kingdom and some status updates for you Splash Mountain definitely still has the longest line in the park at 80 minutes everything else is dropping slowly but surely Seven Doors Mine Train is down to 55 space is down to 45 so I'm hoping those keep dropping. Um, and in the meantime, we're gonna do a couple fillers. Um, the Little Mermaid attraction, which despite my aversion to Ursula is great. And I think if you have time, you should throw that one in. Um, 20 minute wait, Dumbo 10. Um, the other one I'm looking at right now is Buzz, which is 30. I'm hoping that drops a little bit more. Small World is 50. It's a little long for Small World. But those are some of the attractions I'm monitoring we continue our lovely day okay under the sea journey of the little mermaid tm a very lengthy name but a very cute attraction it's an omnivore style attraction just like peter pan tells the story of ariel and the little mermaid you know how i feel about ursula and she is here and she's very big and scary but when this line doesn't have, or when this ride doesn't have a very long line, it is very cute. Your little ones that love princesses will enjoy it. It was actually more like a walk-on than it was a 20 minute wait. It was maybe five minutes. Um, so that was awesome. And again, that's not a must, must do, um, unless you've got princess loving gals and boys, but it's great to do, especially when there's not a long wait. Um, and now we're gonna come do Dumbo because it still is a 10 minute wait and I do love Dumbo. And this is a rite of passage um, that I feel like everyone is legally required to ride um, at least on their first visit to the magic kingdom if not every visit to the magic kingdom and so what's really cool about dumbo when the parks are normal um, this back here is actually a playground and it's a circus themed playground that your kids can run and jump and slide and climb and have so much fun they give you a pager um, and then just like a restaurant when the pager goes off it's time to fly with dumbo and you mom and dad get to sit down in the ac kids get to play 
course they are not operating that right now for health and safety reasons, but way better than when I was little and Dumbo sat behind the carousel and you waited in the bajillion degree heat and just weaved back and forth through the chains. Oh, I get to go already? All right, well, someone took the Clemson Dumbo. Should I fight them? Probably not. Probably not. All right, are there two of each? Can I still get a Clemson Dumbo? I don't think so. I think this day's ruined. Um, that's fine. No, no. We're being dramatic. No more Clemson Dumbos. Which is the orange and purple one. So instead, we're going to go with this cool... This is the closest to Clemson Dumbo. It's like purple and salmon or coral. Dumbo is so much fun. It's so simple, but I find it just delightful. And especially because it very rarely has a weight. It's great. I love it. And I'm glad I did it. And if you get the chance to go at night, that's even cooler because the castle's all lit up and they actually light up under the water in the middle of the Dumbo. It's really great. And now we're headed to Tomorrowland. Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin has a 30 minute wait. I mean, I hope it's less, but I would like to go see my pal Buzz Lightyear. Um, and Space Mountain has a 45 minute wait, which I kind of believe and I kind of don't believe. So I want to talk to the cast members there too to maybe see if space is a little shorter. On my way over, I thought I'd pop into Star Traders. I love to shop, you guys know this. And Star Traders is a really cool shop here in Tomorrowland where they have a lot of the trendier stuff. So kind of like Disney style in Disney Springs. This is where you're gonna find some of your newer, trendier things. Um, spirit jerseys, ears, lounge flies, etc. Like face masks. That's kind of fun. I actually tried a couple of these. They were fine. I really don't know if face masks do anything. I just feel like I'm doing hashtag self-care when I wear it and then feel better after. Um, don't know if it's a mental game or actually helping. Uh, they've got Numos. Numios. That's what I say, but I know it's Numos. Um, these are a new thing in America, but they're coming straight over from Japan. And they're these cute little bendable Disney characters and then you buy accessories and such for them. And they're very adorable, but I don't have one yet because I feel like once I go down the rabbit hole of buying spear jerseys and lounge flies for my doll, I'll never stop. And I already have a problem buying ears for myself. So, um, but they are coming out with a Winnie the Pooh set and I feel like I will not be able to resist Tigger. They've got some of the newer ears. I do love these periwinkle ones. I don't know how I feel, or lavender, I I don't know how I feel about this, so I haven't bought them yet. What do we think? Why can't they just have a normal bow? Huh, I haven't decided, but I love the color. That's where I'm at. They also, because we're in Tomorrowland, have a ton of stitch stuff. So if you're a stitch fan, here you go. You could own this jacket. We're gonna go scoot over to space. Still has that 45 minute posted. Buzz has 30. Maybe we'll see. <gasps> Buzz Lightyear's over there. Oh. Hi, Buzz. I love you so much. You're my favorite. Can we take a selfie? Thanks, Buzz. Now, it really is the perfect day. Um, I've seen the stepsisters from Cinderella meet outside Princess Fairytale Hall. I haven't seen them today. Um, I've seen Captain Jack over in Adventureland near Pirates of the Caribbean. Country Bears, of course, come out above Country Bears. Um, so not a ton of roaming characters here in this park, but you'll see more of them in like Epcot. Um, and they're starting to test them out in Hollywood Studios and stuff too. So you'll just see them about and feel free to go up and say hi, get a selfie. It's not the same as giving a hug, but I'll take what I can get with Buzz Lightyear. Space really does have a posted 45 minute wait, but the queue doesn't even fill up this section. And I feel like this manager right here is actually shortening the queue, which is a good sign. Hi there! Um, which is actually a great sign for the wait time not being that long. So we're gonna do it. We're gonna hope it's at least five minutes. 
short so we don't go over my goal of writing anything with a more than 40 minute wait but I think I think it's gonna be less it's only been about 15 minutes and I'm already about to load so safe to say 45 minutes was not correct glad we took that gamble um, I'm not gonna tell you that the lines are always that overestimated but typically they're over a little bit especially at this point in the late afternoon not a lot of people are here anymore so uh, 15 minutes for Space Mountain that is excellent So good i haven't ridden it in a while oh so fun um 44 inch height requirement as opposed to splash and big thunder which are 40. uh it's in the dark it's definitely the most intense ride here but it's not super overwhelming for your adults here older kids oh gosh it is so fun space also marks our triple mountain challenge is complete so that's definitely part of a perfect day magic in my book so we need to do all three of the mountains space mountain splash mountain big thunder mountain railroad in one day I wonder when they become Princess and the Frog themed at Splash, if it'll still have Mountain in the name. Like if it'll be like Tiana's Swamp Mountain. I don't know, doesn't matter, I'm excited. Don't know when that's gonna happen, but I'm excited to see it. Now I'm gonna hope Buzz, Buzz is a listed 30, but I'm gonna hope I have as good a luck on Buzz as I do on did on Space. I also went ahead and was thinking about dinner and we're really moving and grooving through this day. And I decided to check the walk-up wait list. And um, I was able to put myself on the wait list at Skipper Canteen, which I haven't been to for a while, but it'll be nice to go sit down. There's some cool stuff in there. Have a good something to eat, a little something, you know? Um, and I also wanted to talk to you about the walk-up wait list. So it's a feature on the My Disney Experience app. You go in like you're gonna make a dining reservation, but you click now as opposed to lunch or dinner. And then it'll let you know if any restaurants nearby have a wait list you can join. Uh, you sign up for the wait list and then it'll let you know, it sends you a text how long it's gonna be. Um, and then it sends you a text when it's your turn to go back to the table. You can take yourself off the wait list if you change your mind, but it's a really great feature. Um, and I'm glad that we're gonna get to go have a fun bite in a little bit. All right, so we're gonna go ride Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin. It's down to a 20 minute post to wait, which is A plus. This is also an Omni Mover, like Peter Pan and Ariel and Haunted Mansion, so I'm hoping it actually goes a little faster, but I won't complain about 20 minutes. Just one. Thank you. For the record, friends, that was about seven minutes, maybe. All right, well, Buzz, definitely more like a walk-on than a 20-minute wait. Um, I got like 700 and something thousand, which is pretty good, I guess. I tried to use my other gun. I normally go for the left gun because you're closer to that big orange robot that goes beep, pop, boop. Um, and that one has targets on him that are worth 100 grand. Um, but he's not working right now, so I tried the right gun. So, you know, can't win them all, I guess. Literally just got the text as we were walking into Adventureland. Talk about perfect. This is that spring roll cart. Uh, cheeseburger and pepperoni pizza spring rolls. Make sure to ask for the secret sauce. I prefer the cheeseburger ones. I had them on the park hopping video I did recently. The is park hopping worth it um, video that we can link for you. 
but keep in mind um, that cart is usually only open on the weekends um, and they close at six. All right, they said I'll be seated in less than a minute. The skipper also said that this is my biggest fan, LOL. Um, if you weren't aware of Skipper Canteen, again, it is a full service restaurant, sit down, table service. Um, and it is themed after the Jungle Cruise. So you, your skipper, your waiters or waitress will be a skipper. So they're gonna be silly. I know you can't really walk around a restaurant as much as you used to. You kind of want to like get and sit. Um, but I also like that if you look up here, you've got the offices of the skippers. Skipper Harper, Skipper Bill, and Skipper Mark. Those are actually nods to different Imagineers. Uh, that would be Mark Davis. Harper Goff and Bill Evans. Oh my gosh, I'm realizing so many details about this. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna stand up at my table. My mask is still on. Okay. Do you see that? That's Skipper Bill. That's Plant Studies. He was the Imagineer that um, figured out how to do all the plant life. He also figured out how to get the Liberty Tree from over by Animal Kingdom to Liberty Square. Um, and then Skipper Harper cartography that's map making he um also has a map nod to him over in uh, across from little mermaid and then you've also got skipper mark animal biological studies skipper mark is hilarious he's the one that does any sight gags that you see on a classic ride like jungle cruise pirates of the caribbean haunted mansion anything funny probably mark davis okay my first course is here it's the Kungaloosh. Um, excursion ale initially they only had this at animal kingdom it's a custom brew for walt disney world um, and it's themed after kungaloosh if you remember the old adventurers club um, back at pleasure island then you will understand kungaloosh so it's brewed just for disney world you guys know i go hard for custom theme park beers but now because this place also has a tie to the adventurers club and the sea society which is the society for the explorers association Society for Explorers and Adventurers, I'm sorry. Um, and there is a secret room in there. It's called the SEA room. Um, and it all ties together in a giant story and it's gonna tie into the new Jungle Cruise as well. Anyway, the long story short is that they serve this special beer here now too because of its, all of its connections um, to the Adventurers Club. The coaster stuck to it. So don't be alarmed when it falls off halfway through me drinking this. Okay, definitely heavier than I normally pick, but not really. It looks a lot heavier than it actually is. Um, it tastes like an ale. It reminds me a lot of the um, one of the ones over in Harry Potter, the, the um, Hogshead Brew, I believe is the one that I like over there, yeah. Um, so darker than I normally drink. I'm normally more of a wheat beer kind of gal, but I enjoy a custom theme park beer. I um, You cannot drink in the Magic Kingdom out and about you're not gonna find beer at any kind of cart um, or any walk-up scene or anything but they do serve just beer and wine at their sit-down restaurant so if you are an adult who wants to have a, a cocktail with dinner you absolutely can um, except for not a cocktail a beer or a wine and you can't come in and just drink you have to order food too because of course that is a very hot topic when that came out um, because on the one hand it's Magic Kingdom it's definitely a family park you don't want it to have the party vibe of Epcot um, by selling alcohol everywhere but on the other hand people are paying a lot of money to have really nice meals um, in places like Cinderella's Royal Table and be our guest a lot of people get engaged there and want to toast with a glass of champagne so I think what they've done by just serving it to people that are eating in the restaurants they limited to two per person I think that was the right balance um, and I you know it's been a long day we've been at a theme park um, for almost 12 hours so it's nice to sit down and relax and have something to eat and, and a cold beer to wash it down that's just my opinion all right, let's try this pork. I already know I like the cheese bread, so I want to try the pork first. Mmm. Oh my gosh, wow. That ginger soy sauce drizzle, A plus. And the pork is so tender, oh my gosh. Mm, it's so moist. Really, really flavorful. A little bit of sweetness from the ginger but not too salty. Sometimes soy sauce, you know, it gets really salty, but it's not. Definitely a good, I mean, it's three skewers of pork. Definitely could be a lighter meal or you could share it if you're getting other things. This menu is very 
world inspired. Um, so it kind of scares a lot of people to come eat here because they look at the menu and they're not sure if they're going to like it. Um, but just like the Jungle Cruise, you travel the rivers of South America and Asia and Africa, you're going to see that flavor profile in here. But it's still done in a, I think, accessible way. Like. It's not, this isn't that much different than something you may have had before. So I think give it a try unless you're a really, really picky eater. You've got really, really picky kids. But for my buck, this isn't a really good quick uh, table service restaurant. You can usually get a table or a walk up like we did. The char on this pork. Wow. Mm -mm -mm. Gonna get some of that poblano and that chimichurri on there. I want to cry, this is so good. I forgot about how good this was until I looked at the walk-up list and was like, oh, wonder if they still have that cheese bread. Yummy, delicious, definitely shareable, starchy. Um, I believe it's made with tapioca flour, so if you're gluten-free, I believe you can have this. I would double check, but um, it's not super, super cheesy. Like, you can taste that there's cheese in it, but it's not like eating like a biscuit somewhere like Red Lobster or Chef Arts with Homecoming where you've got like the cheddar in it. It's just like hints of cheese. And then this sauce is the sweetness in the chimichurri and then the little bit of spice from the pepper and then the, the cream cheese brings it all together. This is better food than I thought I was gonna eat in the Magic Kingdom today, if I'm being honest. I to come check out the Lost and Unfound shelf since no one's sitting over here. And the first thing I noticed is this box that says warning may contain live snake and it's owned by Jay Lindsay. Um, that's a nod to, of course, Jack Lindsay, owner of the Hangar Bar at Disney Springs. I just did a video um, there, we'll link it for you, but he was Indiana Jones's plane, uh, plane, he was the pilot of the plane, obviously and he had a pet snake named reggie so that's a really cool little nod in there too um because indiana jones is also part of sea here's the sea room it's secret it's behind a bookshelf you know how people have that i've always wanted that let's look at the bookshelf since no one's here about, there are so many easter eggs on these books i can almost guarantee it oops with sailor robinson just found one nailed it um anyway haven't you always wanted one of those, like where you push a bookshelf in your house and then it opens up and it's another place? Look, is it just me? Or does that look like Dollar Dr. Alan Grant? It's probably not because that's a different company and franchise, but I'm just saying. I've done it. I found the funniest Easter egg ever in a Disney anywhere. Shades of Khaki, the book. That is so funny on like 18 different levels. That's good, that's rich. The nerd in me cannot stop reading these book titles. I wanted to show a few of them to you. The Mystery Castle by Cindy Ella. Prime, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. But then you've also got Primates of the Caribbean and it's written by Coates. I assume that's a nod to Claude Coates, the Imagineer. Over here, you've got Great Characters of the World Literature by Jay Lasseter. That's a nod to John Lasseter, who founded Pixar. Um, and Meeting Royalty, and uh, written by Sklar, Marty Sklar. We already talked about him today. Um, let's see, I've seen a bunch. Oh, Is This Deadly by Mort Al. Hilarious. Getting Even part, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But they're all by R.E. Venge. Revenge. A couple of other findings. You know on the Magic Bookshelves, you have to pull one book and that's the one that triggers it to open. Can you see which book it is? The Jungle Book. Um, I saw some other ones. Oh, this one, True Life Adventures, is by W.E.D. Um, that is a nod to Walter Elias Disney, the man himself, True Life Adventures. That was also a series he did, um, a documentary series on animals. To my friend Duckfist, there is a book here called The Wildest Ride by J.T. Toad. Of course, that is a nod to your friend and mine, J. Thaddeus Toad. Why is this the coolest place I've ever been? Skipper Canteen ended up being like the low-key underrated hit of my day obviously i love riding all the rides but as someone that gets the pleasure of coming a lot and is a big history nerd walking around and looking at all those little details really really fun um so i still don't know if i would recommend doing a full sit-down meal um at the magic kingdom if you've like never been before um if you have the stamina to go all day which very few people do to go from rope drop to park close you know, you may want to, hi there, keep riding rides. Um, we've got two more I'm going to try and do in the last hour of the park being open. Um, 
But I do think, you know, sometimes I've said this in every perfect day video, in my opinion, you gotta sit back and relax a little bit or you're not gonna make it through a whole Disney vacay. Oh my gosh, hold on, there's so many ducks. Hello, I love all of you so much. You're very adorable, including you. Hello, sir. How are you today? Oh, I love them all. I wanna take pictures of them so bad. Maybe we could take a selfie. Oh, be nice to her. Anyway, in my opinion, perfect days at Disney parks include time to relax and enjoy yourself. So sitting in Frontierland with your Dole Whip and watching cavalcades go by, um, sitting at a restaurant and having something yummy to eat and drink and looking at Disney details, that's a must for me. That's why in Hollywood Studios when I did this, I went to Baseline in Animal Kingdom, I went to Nomad Lounge in Epcot, I went a lot of places because Epcot's really all about sitting and eating and drinking. So that's my two cents. Um, but there's not a ton of really, really great restaurants here or there's obviously not lounges here. Um, so kind of depends on just what you want, but make sure you carve out some time, just sit back and relax and enjoy time with your family. Okay, let's talk about how uh, gorge this castle is right now at dusk. I just spent way too long taking pictures of this duck. She's hard to see. I'll show you some of my fashion duck shoots. Um, she was a really good client. Anyway, we have one hour of part time left. I cannot waste any more taking pictures of ducks. The secret to success at the Magic Kingdom. Get here early. That's in the secret at every park. Get here an hour before rope, uh, before the park closes to rope drop. Go to Splash, Pirates, and Jungle. If those are on your list, I cannot emphasize enough how much you should go to Splash first and Pirates early because even now at the end of the night, Splash still has the longest line. And Pirates had a very long line all day long. So that's my main big tip of advice. dark but I'm here to tell you that it only took 30 minutes to get through the mine train line making that the longest we waited for anything all day it was 30 minutes Can you believe it busy day no lines for us so again early morning make splash your priority followed by pirates and jungle um, and then I would watch mine train but clearly at the end of the night not a long line and so fun at night so fun at night Gorgeous. Okay, there's about seven minutes left of park time, but typically the stores stay open a little bit later on Main Street. We're gonna go get ourselves a souvenir, because I love a souvenir. A little something, a little something to take home. And I've been mulling it over all day what I was gonna get, so. Um, also, we did 13 attractions today. Isn't that crazy? Like 13 really good attractions. Also, wanna know a cool fact? This guy right here is modeled after Herb Ryman. And this guy right here is modeled after John Hinch. These are the two gentlemen that made Cinderella Castle come true. So they're part of the mosaic here. Um, Herb Ryman, who's being the footman right now, is actually who drew the concept art of Cinderella Castle and Sleeping Beauty Castle. The first time it ever went to investors, it was all Herb's drawings that they showed that got investors to invest in Disneyland. And John Hinch was a brilliant architect and he designed the castle. So, isn't that a great way to say thanks to them? By putting them in the mural. I very much miss live entertainment, like the castle stage shows, but I love walking through the castle breezeway. It's just so magical, and that's the only way to describe it. The other reason I suggest doing a scooch of shopping 
um, or having maybe a late dinner reservation or jumping into a ride line at the very end of the moment. Um, because right now when the park's about to close, it's gonna be very crowded on Main Street. Nobody wants to wait in line. So if you can kind of either beat the rush and get out early before the park closes or dilly-dally, you won't have to wait in longest line for a bus or a monorail or a boat. Main Street at night, aren't you beautiful? Currently the confectionery's closed, but what I like to do is um, end my night by getting a Disney treat. And you can, you know, if you can, you can enjoy it on Main Street, but if it's closing, you know, you can just bring it with you. Um, so because the confectionery is under refurbishment, they actually brought in a bunch of the sweets over to the Main Street Cinema. Um, so this is, I mean, they have the same stuff the confectionery had. I'm gonna get one of my favorite Disney treats to go. Right here, the peanut caramel apples, one of my all-time favorite Disney treats, along with the handmade Rice crispy treats I love, but I just love these apples. And while they can't cut it for you right now, that's a-okay with me, because I'm gonna take it and I can cut it at my house. Package pickup isn't happening right now, so I recommend shopping at the end of the night um, or before you leave for that reason, so you don't have to carry it all around unless you can fit it in your bag. Um, so a couple of different things to factor in when you want to go shopping. So the Emporium is huge and gigantic and very overwhelming if you've never been in here. Um, I'm headed towards, I guess, technically the front. Uh, and that is where you are going to find toys, plush, um, headwear. And that's where we're going. Uh, that middle room we just passed you right there. Home goods. And then moving on, you'll find apparel for both men and women, as well as your kids' apparel. That's kind of your general layout. Here is the wall o ears, my personal favorite take home. So I actually put it on Instagram, which of the new pairs that they've come out with recently should end my perfect day. And I pinned it up against this really cute purple with the pink bow, or this really cute periwinkle with like kind of an 80s prom inspired bow. And I'm gonna go look at the Instagram results to see which one I'm getting. I don't have ears in either color, and they're awesome, so. All right, in a very close race, the moment I looked at it, 52 to 48%, the winner is, dun da da da. Well, now I can't even get them. These ones, which are very cute. Well, friends, we set out to have the perfect day at Magic Kingdom, and I think we did just that. 13 attractions, some classic, some underrated, some delicious eats and treats. We got ourselves some new ears. It was a really fabulous day, and I hope you had fun following along and learned some helpful tips for when you're coming to the Magic Kingdom. What's your perfect part of the Magic Kingdom? Definitely let us know that in the comments. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media at AllEarsNet, and until next time, y'all, I'm Molly, and it's been so magical. Want to see more of my videos? Click over here. Want to subscribe? You can do that right here. And also, ring that notification bell to make sure you get instantly notified anytime we post a new video. Thanks for following. See you real soon.